it's trying. There we go. There we go. Uh-oh. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh. Oh, it's working. It's working, boys. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds, where I know we don't rebuild anything around here. I, I just, I don't do anything but buy and refresh and sell cars. <laughs> hey, call it what you want. As long as you're watching the video, I'm happy. So today I am, I'm back trying to make a decision which, which one to work on. Do we want to work on the coupe or the convertible? Now the convertible needs quite a bit of work, whereas the coupe is almost done. Um, all we got to do to the coupe, let's see, the coupe is getting this beautiful, look at this door panel, 300 dollars guys that was not cheap 300 bucks so that i could uh make the door <laughs> handle work hey it is what it is man i'll show you the back when i told you that it was riveted in you see what i mean there's the door handle look at all those rivets i was just scared to death to bust these out and then not be able uh, there was one of these for sale separately for 80 bucks i just i didn't feel it was worth the risk Honestly, I, I, I couldn't bring myself to do it. I was like, I'm going to break the door panel and have to buy one anyway. And <laughs> Okay. Anyway, there was only one of these that I could find that was black. So I just, I couldn't risk it. <clears throat> Next, we got a set of tires, right? I've got a brand new set of matching tires for the convertible. Those ran me $300. Um, but this is for the coupe. And then what else is for the coupe? Right here. This amplifier should fix the stereo for the coupe. So that's, and that's all we gotta do to the coupe other than uh, get the headlights cleaned. And I'll probably send it to detail. Um, oh, it's locked. Really? I haven't started these cars. It's been about, I think it's been about a week. We'll see if the batteries are still up in them or not because that's, kind of important let's see oh yeah so we saved the battery in this one that's good I'll let it run for a minute this thing hasn't been started up in a while she runs good man she really does there's that dang low tire light it occasionally it pops on or it, or it turns off comes on kind of whenever it wants this door panel is pretty it's pretty rough to begin with you know what I mean you can just see it it's worn out so the other one looks good though. So I think this door panel will make a big difference. Um, a good interior, exterior detail on this. Get the headlights clean, put in that little amplifier, put in the door panel. And uh, Weird Beard said he's gonna take a look at these uh, tops and see if there's something he can do to make this trim uh, going all the way around here look better. So maybe he can do something with that. And that's really it. At that point, this car is ready to send. Now, I think I'm gonna have, that. this one's probably gonna start out around 4,000. I think we'll do, uh, we'll start out at 4,250 and we'll see what happens. And that'll kind of give me a, an idea when this one sells of how this one's gonna do. So we'll probably do this one today just to get it done because truthfully, I would like to get it out of here. Th this doesn't get driven. This doesn't even get driven. Um, but for this one, we've got our own set of problems with this. Let's see if this one will even start up. The key is stuck in the ignition. That's something that we still have to contend with. That battery's weak. Did you hear how, how hard it was to start up? That battery's weak. We're gonna have to replace that battery. I've given this battery plenty of opportunities to come back to life and it just isn't doing it. Man, I keep hoping that key is gonna pop out, but yeah, that battery sounds bad. The battery sounds real bad. And you can see, uh, I've read a lot of your comments and emails that you've sent me, and this uh, spoiler comes up on its own kind of to alert you, hey, your battery's not doing well. Um, we still have to fix the convertible seam right here. Um, I've got some special epoxy that's coming for this, but first we gotta get it, get it working. And uh, we found out that it had a broken line, and that appears to be what's preventing the convertible top from functioning properly. So uh, that car was also very low on ATF-134, so I got a bunch of ATF-134. Uh, the transmission's been shifting fine in it. We're gonna fill it up with fluid, see how it does. 
here is this mess of uh, hoses. Yeah, take a look at that, right? Now I only need one hose out of this. I believe it's hose number 32, and it's real simple. We'll just clip, pull a clip, pop it out. We'll pop it in the new one, fill it up with fluid, uh, purge the system by making the top go up and down, up and down, up and down. Eventually it'll purge all the air out of it. And then the convertible top on that should work. So I think, like I said, for today, let's focus on getting, what should we do? Let's fix the convertible top. I should get this one done because I, I should really just send this one down the road and get the money out of it. But we're gonna do this one. I'm gonna put some uh, transmission fluid in it. We'll pop the hatch over here, or the trunk, whatever you wanna call it. Let's see if we can fix the convertible top on this today, at least the functionality of it, the up and down. I think that'll be, uh, that'll be good enough for me if we can get the top to actually go up and down. That was my biggest worry, biggest concern, is that there's something serious wrong with the top that's gonna to cost a lot of money. So let's do the top. Another thing worth pointing out, this is a Ross Ray, Ross Ray. I got the uh, OEM badges to go across here. So we have the C, F, and the I to put back on here. So it will it will look it will look right when we're done with it. Now, where did we leave off? Oh look, I left my lights and everything in here. Oh man, the rag fell off and now the computer's soaked in oil. That's great, lovely. Well, so we may need a convertible top computer as well. <laughs> that was my stupidity. Yeah, I really screwed that one up. Okay, so we need to replace this line, which is, I need to see which number it is. It's 32, and we're just gonna run it from there back over here. It should be pretty simple. Let's get that line replaced and uh, fill this thing up with fluid and see what it does. All right, so I know I went through and did all this without you, and I'm sorry. I know a lot of you is gonna wish that I had a time lapse, but these are really tight quarters back here, guys. It's way down in there. I'm having a hard time I wanted to take the pump out, but there's one 10 millimeter in there I just can't get to. So I had to do everything with that valve block with the pump still down there. There's no way I could have recorded that. So we've got the new hose hooked up under there. We've got the valve block bolted back down, and now it's time to fill it up. Uh, this system is going to take uh, CHF 11S. I've got a little funnel here that you can kind of see I've bent in the middle here to give it a little bit of an angle. It fits perfectly in the fill hole. The problem is you can't fill it like this. So what I do is I just kind of bend it like this. We'll fill it up. We'll give the hydraulic system a, uh, a first try with the new hose and cross our fingers that nothing pops. Okay, so it is time to give it a try. Now there is a micro switch right here that we've got to fool into thinking there's a partition. We've got to move this stuff out of the way. Uh, you don't want to have anything in the way of the convertible top coming down here. So I'm going to get all this stuff moved out of the convertible top's way. I'll find something to just shove in that micro switch uh, to make it think that everything is, that the partition is in here. And uh, we're going to fire it up. We'll find out if this top is going to work or not. Moment of truth. What do you guys think? Oh, I'm hoping we don't have another catastrophic leak. Hey, it started up that time and the spoiler didn't come up. Now this is one of those things, this is not gonna work first try, okay? Not a chance because the hydraulic system is full of air. So this is a good sign, turning this makes the windows go down. Now this won't hold itself up either, so you've gotta kinda hold this up and at the same time, push the open button. Now I can hear the hydraulic fluid moving around. It's trying. There we go. There we go. Uh-oh. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh. Oh, it's working. It's working, boys. What? What? And I guess that part's just gonna softly close. Well, it, it almost did it all the way. <laughs> it's not perfect, 
but it did it, right? I can't tell you how happy I am to see that the convertible top went down on its own and I don't see any fluid pouring out of the bottom here like it was before. So yeah, she may need a little, uh, a little encouragement. Huh. There's also a possibility that, that latch just didn't close all the way. But the good news is, and you can't open this manually, I had to buy a special tool, I and mean, I bought the tool just in case, because you don't want this thing going down and then deciding it's not going to uh, go back up again. So I did go and buy a special tool just for this that goes down, well, it goes down somewhere. I don't remember, I watched a video on it. So that's good news. Try to drop it down one more time, just let it go on its own, come on. No? Huh. Okay, well, it seems like it's catching. Oh, back there. my pump is moving. Uh-oh. <laughs> I forgot to bolt the pump back down. Oh, crap. That's not good. Okay. <laughs> so it's catching on the pump, and now the trunk is stuck up. Well, this will be fun. I'll pop the trunk, and hopefully we can... Oh, the... <laughs> oh, this is going to be fun. Not too shabby, guys. She's not 100%, but it's a heck of a lot better than it was. This uh, lid back here doesn't want to close all the way, as you can see. So you kind of got to help her out a little bit. She'll open. You see how it doesn't, it just doesn't want to suck down in there all the way. This convertible top is really frustrating. You can lift it up by hand. It's supposed to close a whole lot easier than this, but as you can see, well now it's just jammed. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. I've already sprayed, uh, I sprayed silicon down in here, but that didn't seem to really help things much at all. It's becoming quite frustrating, guys. I mean, it will lower down. It just seems like it doesn't want to close all the way. I don't understand it. We've checked the hydraulic fluid. Hydraulic fluid is full. Now, if you push it down, she'll get there. And I do believe it's safe like that. It doesn't look like, see, it doesn't look like you're gonna get it back up just needs a little bit of help going down but at the same time I'm no fool I know it's not right and I can see a gap I may need some of you to help me out man <laughs> this car has been frustrating the living heck out of me pretty much since it got here hey, you can see the gap right here she's not closed no see I can open it so it's like it's not a it's not latching right there. I mean, I'm glad that we've accomplished something today. We can get it to open. Can we push it? See? It's like it's that locking mechanism in there is not actually attempting to lock it. There could be a couple bad parts in there. That, that mechanism that actually locks this tonneau cover down Perhaps it's just not working. And the top doesn't like to go back into the closed position either where it comes up and closes. It's, uh, it's having a difficult time with that as well. When you go to uh, close the top, it tends to bind up. I mean, we don't have any lights flashing and I know the door's open, the e-brake is not on. Uh, it, it, that doesn't have anything to do with it. But if you go to close the top, I'll go ahead and close the door. See, she lift up, and it'll start doing its thing. Now, another thing I noticed is as this comes down, this part is supposed to stay up like this, but see, it just slams. That's not supposed to happen. So you kind of have to 
hold it by hand here and well, this is now it's going to try to close that lid back there the tanu cover and i'll show you what happens it, it's stuck now so now you're going to have your light flashing now it's all kinds of ticked off at you and here's what happens the uh the bow or whatever is not it's not lifting up enough and this is contacting it and when that happens boom it's stuck i've been fighting this thing and fighting and fighting and i'm just i'm on i'm going to be honest with you guys i'm getting tired of fighting it man i think i'll come in here with some wd-40 and i'll lube up some of the hinges and the locking mechanism over here. here's the actual locking mechanism that we're having trouble with or at least that i feel like we're having trouble with it doesn't appear to be latching to pull the convertible top down I, mean, I don't see anything that looks like it's out of place that should be causing a problem i don't know i'm going to keep fooling with it i'm going to slap some wd-40 on a lot of these hinges and see if maybe that helps it out some um this top honestly probably just needs to be replaced what a pain it's it's just becoming a major pain in the rear for me all right so we got the top down this is the first real drive of this car um before there wasn't hardly any transmission fluid in it i just checked and made sure the transmission fluid is full and it's shifting through the gears just fine the battery seems to be taking a better charge now that i cleaned up the uh battery terminals i'm going to give the battery one more chance before we replace it uh this top is just going to continue bringing me problems i feel i i feel like this convertible top is just going to be a real headache for me um, you can get it to go up and you can get it to go down, but <laughs> there's like a, a certain sequence of events that have to take place and you have to know, it's kind of like Tetris, you know, things happen, then you got to know to go do this and then you can come back and finish it. <laughs> I'm hoping that I can remember the sequence soon enough so that this, this becomes a lot easier for me. Now, as far as drivability goes, I mean, there's nothing like driving a little Crossfire, man. This thing, uh, she's got plenty of pickup and go. She really does. It, it rides great, handles like it's on rails. With the top down, man, it's just a, it's a great experience. I feel, personally, that it is a great looking car. It's a lot of fun to drive. Uh, unfortunately, I think this one's gonna need just a little bit more work. We may have to replace the top, and uh, I don't wanna get into replacing the top until well i don't want to replace the top but i definitely don't want to replace the top until we have it functioning up and down properly as far as the suspension is is, is is concerned on this car man she is solid it doesn't bounce around it's not rattling around or anything like that i mean it's uh it's a real comfortable solid driving car it really is. I think it's worth trying to get it sorted out. I know several of you were saying that we were going to part this one out, cut it up, and put the other car together with it. No, man. No, are you kidding me? I'm not going to cut this car apart. It's far, it's far too good of a car for that, in my opinion. She really does run good, and it handles great. Um, Unfortunately, that daggum top, it's almost 80 degrees out here, ladies and gentlemen. Almost 80. Hey, there's a washer and dryer right there. I ought to come back with the truck and pick those up tonight. And you, you guys may not know this, but I actually can fix washers and dryers. Is that a gas dryer or electric? I can't tell. Huh. How about that? Well, so far, so good, guys. Uh, this is the, like I said, this is the first real drive of the car, and she's handling it very well. Uh, so far, I'm very impressed with the way she's running and driving. Give it some gas. Whoa. I mean, she's happy. She's happy to be up and running. Look at her go. It's a great cruiser especially on these back roads with the top down man Woo! yeah
try to burn some of the cobwebs out of you know what i mean this car has been sitting for quite a while i could tell by all the junk that was in the engine bay oh the spoiler came up look at that <laughs> that automatic spoiler and if i slow down below 40 should go right back down I, I don't know why i've always thought that was just really cool watch i'll give her some gas I'm telling you, I know a lot of you hate the crossfire, and I understand. I really do. I, I understand that it's this Frankenstein hybrid Mercedes-Benz uh, slash Chrysler, and I can definitely understand why a lot of you really do hate the crossfire. But I've got a, I've just got, it's one of those cars that has always had a soft spot in my heart, man. Or I've always had a soft spot, <laughs> soft spot in my heart for this car. And this one is in really good condition mechanically. Aside from the convertible top needing some work here, that top's going to go down again. Or that, uh, that spoiler is going to go down in right now. There she goes. Yeah, I got a soft spot for this car. I really do. I think it's a great looking car. It's so much fun to drive. And I, all I can say is before you judge this car, I highly recommend you go drive one. A good one, not a, not a bucket. Go drive a decent Crossfire and come back to this video and tell me what you thought of the experience. I think you're gonna be pleasantly surprised. So I'm gonna get back to the house and then uh, I'm gonna see if we can fight with this top a little bit more. I'll tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, this is getting real old, real fast. So the battery is cranking up the car just fine now. Take a listen. The spoiler isn't coming up anymore when you start the car. So the car is starting just fine. It seems like the battery, ter the battery terminals are rusted. I mean, they were corroded really, really badly. Um, so I think we got the battery problem taken care of. Car starts over just fine, but now the top doesn't do anything. Take a look. I'll roll the windows up. All right. But I start out by noticing that now suddenly we have a blinking light, which we didn't have before. You go up here and you pull this, turn it, the windows go down. Now that's a good sign. The windows going down means uh, things are trying to do what they're supposed to do. And then you push the open button and nothing happens. As, as I'm assuming you can see, All I hear is a click. I hear a click. I do not hear the motor anymore. And now it's going to start beeping. <sighs> you feel me? I, kn I know you do. I know you understand what this is like, man. I am a... Uh, shut up. <laughs> I'm just... I've got a headache. I have been working with on this top for hours. I mean, hours. I don't really understand what's going on. I checked all my fuses to make sure we didn't have a blown fuse because we before we had a blown fuse for the convertible top motor or pump, whatever you want to call it. The fuses aren't blown. All fuses in this car are good. Everything seems to be working. I've checked all the sensors, all the little micro switches and everything. I've used this tool to make sure that the top is in the right position that everything is locked down the way it's supposed to be in the closed position and it is but for whatever reason oh now the top light's not flashing <laughs> oh this is one of those cars this is one of those cars so i'm not gonna lie this is one of those cars where it's getting to the point to where i am about done uh, and that means not putting any more money into it, not doing anything else and cutting my losses. Now, I know that's going to upset some people. And then I think there's some of you that's going to be like, bravo, good job. There's not many cars that I give up on, especially once I start working on them, buying parts for them. But we still have the key stuck in the ignition. Okay. And that, that's going to be a problem. Now I've watched some videos. I've had a lot of you guys come on here and show me videos on, on how to fix the problem. The issue is the key is already stuck in it. And for that, I believe you've got to tear everything apart and drill it out. 
the ignition alone could end up costing many, many hundreds of dollars. I'm talking 400 or so dollars to get repaired if I do it myself and order another ignition online. Um, if the key gets damaged, uh, it's, it's over. If this key gets damaged, you're talking, I think it's like $400 for the key. Um, I don't know if that includes programming and cutting, but I know the key's around 400. The cylinder, um, you can get for around 150, the tumbler, like they, you can buy the whole kits. There's a whole kit that comes with all the modules, everything, all the door locks. So you got to replace everything. Those are five to six hundred dollars. So, I mean, that key alone is really my sticking point. <laughs> oh, that was so funny. Get it? Sticking point. The key is really going to be some money. The windshield around 180, 200 dollars. The tires were 300. I'm kind of thankful I haven't put those on this car yet um if the convertible motor slash pump is bad if it if it froze up for whatever reason um which it shouldn't it was working fine and now it doesn't work at all like it just suddenly stopped working which made me think fuse there's no blown fuses um that pump motor with the valve block solenoids and everything th that thing used on ebay is three to four hundred dollars each one of these latch mechanisms back here that may or may not be bad i still haven't figured out if they're working i think we've got one for the tanu cover um that is not functioning properly because i have to manually lock it and unlock it um that one is about 165 dollars i think you get what i'm saying the parts are fairly expensive and we still have a convertible top that is ripped with a window falling down we got to get the window resealed we got to get that seam repaired it's just looking like it's too much, guys. Um, I've got over three grand in this car just buying it from Copart and having it delivered. Three grand. How much more am I going to spend just trying to put it together? There's so many what ifs. What if we break the key? What if we can't get the key out of the ignition? What if we can't get the convertible top working? All of these things drastically affect the resale value of the car not to mention it's it's we're heading into winter even though today was like almost 80 we're heading into winter now so convertibles are not going to be hot sellers uh you know what comment below and tell me what you think i think personally this one this one was just a bad deal you know it happens a lot of times i get great deals but this one i feel was just uh it was a bad day. Well, don't forget, we've got $100 in those hoses that I bought for the convertible top. I think I paid like 50 bucks for the crossfire emblems that go across the back where it's missing the letters. Uh, yeah, man, we're, we're quickly approaching by this point $4,000 into this car. Uh, what are we going to sell it for like this, as is? I don't know. Two grand? 25 I think 25 tops. Tops. Get it? It runs great. It's got a few good things going for it. Motor, transmission, solid as a rock. Suspension, really good. Um, it runs and drives absolutely fine, and it starts up every time with no issue. Both of the windows work. Heat, air conditioning works. Radio works. CD player works. Um, and there's no really important lights on the dash that would scare anybody away, I don't think. Airbag light, washer fluid, we could probably fix by putting some washer fluid in it. Uh, tire pressure light, that, just like that car, it, it comes and goes kind of as it pleases. It never flashes, but it'll be on for a while. And then as you drive a little bit, it goes away. Now, I've aired up the tires on both these cars and made sure they're up to like 32 PSI. We're still having the problem, so... I don't know. The spoiler goes up and down like it's supposed to. It works automatically. This car is one of those, it's gonna need some work. And I just don't think, I don't think I have it in me right now. I've got too much other stuff going on to be dealing with every issue that this particular car has. So I guess that's gonna do it for this video. I really do want your input. I want you to comment below and tell me what you think. I am, I just feel like I'm done. Have you ever felt that way on a project? It doesn't have to be a car, a house project, making model cars, RC planes, building model airplanes, you know, model ships, whatever it is that you do, gardening, I don't know, you know, whatever it is you do, your your projects, your what you do to, well, decompress, relieve stress, that's what this is supposed to be. This is my, we're going to get out there and get things done. And let me tell you, when that top opened up on its own, 
and almost closed on its own, uh, that was a great feeling. Like that, like the feeling of accomplishment gives me great satisfaction. And then after I put everything back together, right, it's all seeming to work fine. I know we needed probably need a new top. I'm like, okay, looking into that, it's about $2,000 or so to get a new top done. I was considering it because the top was working. You put, I put all the pieces back in, it is all bolted up. Everything still worked and then it just didn't. It just stopped out of nowhere. For no apparent reason, it stopped. And let me tell you, getting my hands into that, uh, that area where the valve block is for the convertible top to change out that hose, that was difficult. There is no room to work down there, and all this has done is just further frustrated me. You know, I was so happy that it worked, and now it just quit again, and, and it's not a hydraulic leak. The fluid is still full. It just doesn't work, and I'm just beyond aggravated at this point. Um, unfortunately, parts for these cars aren't exactly cheap. I wouldn't call them expensive, but they're not cheap either, and you run into problem after problem after problem before you know it, you're going to spend more money working on the thing than it's even worth. So I really feel like this is one to probably just send down, you know, send it down as it is. It's not going to be an easy sell. I know that, but it's not a bad looking car. And if somebody's got the time, patience and finances to get into it and they feel like they're getting it for a good price, you know, maybe we can try it out for $29.95 and see how that goes and hope to get somewhere around $2,500 for it. I think, I mean, that's a better deal than I got. Take that in consideration. It's a much better deal than I got because it cost me $3,000 to get it to the door and I couldn't even get it running and I had to cripple it down the street. <laughs> so somebody's going to get a decent deal. Can you tell I'm torn? Like, I'm really torn. Like, I don't want to send it. That's not what I want to do. I want to fix it. But, man, I am so stressed right now with the other house, getting my dealer's license paperwork filed, getting all these licenses, insurance, bonds, getting the house finished. Did I say getting the house finished already? Uh, trying to figure out what I got to do to get this shop built. But I got to finish the house first. All of these cars, my brand new Corvette that is sitting at the dealership, apparently needing a, a ton of parts uh from what I, I talked to them today just a quick update on the corvette talked to them today and they're like they said something about like an exhaust manifold or something i, I don't even know what why would it need an exhaust manifold that doesn't even make sense to me but uh, a new sending unit a new crossover pipe um, a new fuel pump um the new manifold and i'm just like what this is a brand new car are you kidding me why would it need all these parts uh, it's I need, to, I need to take a step back for a minute. So I'm going to stop rambling. I know so many of you hate it when I ramble. I do apologize. I'm just, for once, I'm genuinely stressed to the breaking point. And when that happens, you got to walk away. you got to take a step back. So I'm not going to make any, any decisions right now today on what to do with any of these cars or anything. The worst thing you can do is make a decision in haste. But I am going to take a step back. And I'm going to think about this overnight. I'm going to have a nice dinner. I'm going to relax and just enjoy myself. And, and, and take a step back from all of this. But I really do feel like the logical choice here is to let this one go and continue on the other one. You know, I think the other one was a much better deal. It's in much better condition overall than this one is with much higher, much higher mileage. Um, but do me a favor, comment below and tell me what you think. If you enjoy this content, please give the video a big thumbs up. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram, please, uh, Auto Auction Rebuilds. I really do appreciate all of you following me along on these journeys, man. You know, some of these cars, we get into them, we knock them out, we get them done, we get them sold. And, and then there's others that are just a headache, you know, and it's just like you don't want to get so upside down on one of these deals that you're never going to make your money back. And there's just, you know that song, you got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them, know when to walk away, know when to run. I, yeah. I feel like this is one this is one we just need to fold our hand, walk away or maybe even run. But uh, I'll I'll listen to your comments below. We'll see what you guys think. Stay safe out there everybody. I'll catch you all very soon in the next one.